let me teach you how to query a GraphQL API for my React Next.js application. My name is Roy, and this week I'm in React India to teach developers how to use GraphQL with a React application. And in this video, I'll be sharing you how to use a GraphQL API inside your React Next.js application. So enjoy. In this video, we'll be querying a GraphQL API from a React Next.js application. So what have I've done? I've created a new project in VS Code called React India. As of course, I'll be streaming this video from India. In here, I've created a new Next.js project using Create Next App, which is a useful CLI to create a new Next.js application. You can even use it to create a Next application based on a template, such as for usage with TypeScript. But today we'll be using it together with GraphQL. Therefore, I also created a directory called Stepsend, in which you can find all these setup files to create a GraphQL API using Stepsend. In here, you can find an index.graphql file, which is the basis of our GraphQL API. So what I will be doing, I'll be first starting up my Next.js application by running yarn dev. So this will start a development server that runs the development version of my application. It will be running on localhost. And if I would be going to my browser, I can actually find it here. You can see I have the network tab open because I will be using the developer tools to check our uh, data requests later on. And also, now I have my development application running. I also will be starting the GraphQL server. For this, I'll be CDing into the Stepsend directory in which I run Stepsend start. So this will start to deploy the GraphQL files to the cloud at which they will be linked to my user account. Of course, you can also use Stepsend without signing up. That way you will get a private, you won't get a private endpoint, but you get a public one instead. So the CLI actually gives me two endpoints. One is a localhost endpoint, which you can use to explore the API using graphical, and the other one is a production ready endpoint that's either public if you, if you didn't sign up and private and secure, meaning protected by a API key if you did sign up. So let me first try and open up the localhost endpoint to see what our data looks like. In here you can see I have multiple queries. I have a query to get a single article and then I have a query to get a list of articles. So let me first get a list of articles you can see these articles are all coming from Practical Dev because my GraphQL API is just taking the REST API from Practical Dev and transforms it into GraphQL. In here, I can just take any of the article IDs and use it to get a single article. And of course, I need to be sure that I actually use a string instead of an integer because that's what the GraphQL API expects. And I can just run this and this gives me a single query. I can also extend this with more information so just getting the created add date, and probably I can also get something like a thumbnail. Maybe they call it image, so cover image. If the article has it, of course. So let me actually go to the overview of all articles and see if some have a cover image. I see some of them, them have, meaning that we can start using this in our application and show the articles, including the title and a cover image. Going back to my Next.js application, the place where I'll be pasting this code is the index.js file. And in here, the only thing I need actually to do data fetching is just scale, create a use effect hook. And inside this use effect hook, I could do a call to get information from the GraphQL API. Luckily, I don't have to type this call by hand because from the steps and dashboard, you can already use connection code. So if you go to the steps and dashboard, you can find your endpoint. In this case, it's API slash devto, and just press the connect button. So this will already give you some sample code for JavaScript, curl, and Python. Today we'll be using JavaScript, so I can just copy paste this and go back to my application code. And in here, the only thing I need to do is paste it inside the use effect hook and save it. And this way my API will be called service client side whenever I do whenever I open the Next.js application. So we'll be going to the network tab and refreshing the page. You can actually see the request is being made. So this will gets the information from the GraphQL API, returns the data, but there's one downside. It also exposes my API key. And with Stepsend, you want to keep your API key protected. So that's why instead of just using a use effect to client side, we'll be using the method get server side props. 
and the method get server side props is already built into Next.js. So I can just delete the use effect hook. Instead, I will be creating a new function at the bottom of this file. Export the const get server side props. So hopefully GitHub Copilot will help me a bit with this. It will be an async call, just like this. And get server side props um, returns the props for your component like this. So what will I do? I will just take the copy pasted code, I'll just format it. And then I have all this code here. So my query is quite extensive. Let's make sure that we only use the query that we want to use. So let me go back to my graphical here, just copy paste this, head back to my code and insert this one instead. So I pasted this very well. So what I need to be doing here is I have an async get server side props call. So instead I will just do an await. So const data is await for this fetch one. Response should be JSON actually. Uh, something like this. And then we can also do const articles is await for the data. And then what we should do is pass the articles to our component, save this, and then at the very top of the file, let me go here, we should type down articles because this will be your prop and we can just console log it to see what it looks like. Save this and then head back to our browser. We're probably will be seeing this request in the terminal. But first, we can see we have a data prop with some articles in there. It's pretty cool. So we came pretty far. We can actually destructure some things. So what we are returning is, let me go here. So articles prop is data.articles. What we can also do is this, data.articles, save it. And that way we should only be getting the articles. Oh, getting a small error there. So probably, Something is going wrong. Oh, wait, let me just rename this. So articles, articles. And then here we have articles.data.articles. It's not the nicest, so maybe just rename this to result. Make this data, this result. And in here we can just do data.data.articles. Just save it and see what our app now looks like. The error should be gone. And we can see the articles being printed in our console. And also, if you go to the network tab, just refresh this page, you won't see any requests because the request is being done server-side, meaning that you can't lack any API keys and so forth. If we go back to our code, we can actually start mapping over uh, the information. Let me just get rid of everything we have in here. Well, maybe leave some things in there. What we can do here is articles.map, get a single article. Actually already start returning a, well, maybe do a diff. Right, let's be fancy and do a lie with the article title. Wrap this, of course, in a list. Put this all the way around. Let me see that I miss anything. To add something here. I'm getting an issue because I need to provide a key. And then just form the document. Go back to my browser. I can see the list of uh, articles rendered uh, from Practical Dev from the GraphQL API. So this is how you create, or how you actually connect to a GraphQL API from a React Next.js application. So what have we done? We've created a Next app using Create Next app. We've created a GraphQL API using Stepsen. And then we used get server side props, a method to get API requests server side to load the data into our app. 
So if you like this video and you like to continue building using StepSend, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Because every week I'll be releasing a new video on how to do cool stuff with GraphQL.